Welcome back for another helping of oysters, clams, and waddles presented by Bolin Media. I am Ross Bolin here with Barrett Dudley to discuss episode five of The Penguin on HBO starring Colin Farrell and Kristen Milioti. How are we doing, Barrett? I'm all right, Ross. We're just two guys here in the studio at the top of the podcasting world. And that's exactly where we want to be. Wailed. It's not embarrassing at all to be here in the studio in Austin, Texas. Don't be embarrassed. <laughs> it's not embarrassing. <laughs> Wailed. We haven't let anybody down, Ross. We're going to do wake. We just waking to get to the top of the world. <laughs> <laughs> just a couple of guys like us, huh? Guys, guys like us, we got to do what we got to do, Barrett. Guys like us, we got to do what we got to do. Uh, I'm doing all right here on a beautiful sunny Monday. Indeed. Yeah. Another uh, really solid episode last night after the explosiveness of uh, episode four. We knew this one would be used to kind of reset the board, right? Yeah. Um. I. I. I, I sort of disagree, but we'll 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 get to it. Oh. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I thought. I, well, here I won't bury the lead. This was. I think this was my least favorite episode of this. Really? Episode. Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah, I had some issues with it. Even even episode uh, two was... Uh, yeah, I, I kind of liked it. I was much higher on episode two than you were. Oh. Yeah. Well, I, I understood your, your critique of episode two, though, for sure. I won't bury the lead either. I'm a lot higher on episode four than you are. Five, you mean? Five. Yeah, yeah. Five. Yeah. Cinco. Yeah. Cinco. Yeah. Um, well, let's get started. Written by Lauren LaFranc, the showrunner, directed yeah, by Craig yeah, Zobel. Yeah. Episode 5 opens with Oz and Victor burning the iconic plum-colored Maserati, which I, like, both my wife and I were like, wait, so why are they burning the car? And all I could make sense of was like, well, it was just used to commit a murder, but in this city, <laughs> yeah. it just doesn't seem, like, necessary, you know? In like, Gotham, right. He could have right. just, like, you know, taken it to the Grand Theft Auto car garage and gotten that thing fixed right up here's the thing when you have two major crime families chasing chasing you yeah you probably don't want to be driving around in a bright purple maserati with gold rims that's a great point yeah yeah and time and to go incognito you probably don't even want that car to be seen anywhere anymore let, lest it you know give away where you were at one point you right. know what i mean it's just like i think it's just like it's too flashy it's too much evidence it did just kill a guy by ramming into <laughs> ramming into him. Like they just, it, it's time to dump it. You it's know? time to let it go. It's time to let it go. End yeah, of an era. Yeah, yeah. Plum colored Maserati gone. Um, Vic and Oz kind of uh, make up here in this in this beginning scene. Vic apologizes to him for like questioning whether or not this life was for him, and he says something along the lines of like, "I know I've only got one shot. Guys like us, we only get one shot. Guys like us, Russ, and I gotta take one it. shot." So then a, a van full of Oz's henchmen roll up, and it's like one of the only, it's sort of like a silly comic booky uh thing they've got going on here where I'm like, who the fuck are these guys? Just like Oz's boys. Yeah, so uh, just, just to jump ahead slightly, I, th this was one of the first things that that uh, that that flagged for me in this episode is it's like uh, like when they get to uh, to Eve's house with this crew, yeah, and he's talking to them about how like they're not even made men, and like I'm like, who the fuck are these guys? Why yeah. like why 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 do I care about them? And then I was like, okay. Then I, I think I was tracking that these are the dude we've seen these dudes before. Yes. They've been on the heists and they're on, on the various Falcone like missions right. of sorts. Right. But they're kind of like Oz's guys or his gang. And so they have kind of like stuck with their with their leader here. Yeah. The way So that that's it's just but but totally. They're absolutely like red shirts. Yeah. And uh, and and we're they're kind of made to be very important very suddenly. Yeah, in a way that I was like, wait, I had to wrap my head around that first. So second. I get it's like Oz. It was like a capo. Yeah, yeah. In the Falcone crime family. That's right. Yeah. And he had a crew. Although under weird him. to be a capo and not made, right? Yeah, that's how many capos. Yeah, I think aren't that's kind of like a rule. You know, yeah. in general with right. the mafia, like you, you don't make it to that status without. Maybe he was like a ring below Capo. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. regardless, he had his own crew of uh, random low-level street I, thugs. I, I'll say this: even if if he was he, you know, Sophia called him a Capo. So I think it just goes to show how much of kind of like a joke he's been 
to the Falcone family. That he still didn't get made. That he's still, that he's, yeah, that he's at this level. He is a capo. He is running all this stuff, and they still won't even make make him. Yeah. That's and, that's how little kind of overall, like, respect they have for this and you, driver. Basically. You do get the impression that when he's giving that speech to the, the crew at, uh, at what's her name's place? Yeah, Eve's place. At yeah. Eve's place, that he's talking about himself. He's right. like, they didn't even know your name. They never respected you. That you, they didn't even get it. We're not even made, but it's like that him. Like these other guys are like, well, why should we have been yeah, made? <laughs> I have yeah. one corner that I work. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. Uh, anyway, van full of his henchmen roll up. Oz explains to them, like, you know, we're going to take over the city and uh, that they're going to exploit an obvious weakness in the Maroney family, Salvatore Marone's son, who is Gen Z TikTok scum. Okay. Also, didn't like this. Taj Maroney. I, I was very, I was. Super taken out of this Gotham noir, Matt Reeves Batman world that TikTok exists here. Yeah, but okay. So in the I Batman, did, uh, this was this was tough. In the Batman, they did sort of like modernize Gotham. Yeah, and bring it into like the present day with the internet streaming and and the Riddler like doing his shit in these shady incel chat groups right. online and whatnot. Okay, but okay. Let me ask you this. It, Okay, here's where I think if I had been writing the show and running the show, I just would have made a fake app that looked like TikTok. Yeah. Because this isn't, this isn't, like, this is supposed to, yes, this is supposed to be a very grounded show, but it also has, like, it's still Gotham. It still has this very, like, comic booky and look that we're, that we buy into to participate in this show. And seeing TikTok on the screen, watching Oz pull out a phone and pull up a TikTok. Okay, was it, though? Pulled me out. Was it actually TikTok? It wasn't yes, like just no, like a... he is on TikTok. He is posting a TikTok. Where he's like admitting to being part of the mafia too. Yeah. He's like, and the Maronis are on the rise. I'm getting this sick back piece done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, because because I didn't hate the like the play. Like everybody, like, 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 you know, the, the, uh, the culture heads among us will remember well that like, this is how Pop Smoke got got, right? But it's also like, how uh, XXX... Triple X, X, or XXX Tentacion... Yeah. Yeah. This is yes. Well, temptation. Like you can't post your location in real time. Everybody nah. knows that. No, it's not a good idea, yeah. especially if you're in the street game. So even Liam Payne, the the you know the poor guy that fell off the the balcony um, from One Direction this yeah. past weekend, like it, there was all this crazy controversy because people were like, Nah, he's posting Snapchats. He looks totally fine. Right now. Twenty minutes before. Yeah, and like it's like. No, those were old Snapchat. Like those were old photos that he was like that he had like scheduled to post or that uh, okay. his team had scheduled to post. His like, social media squad was pushing yes, him out. Yeah, because you can't because you're not doing you're not supposed to do location while you're at location if you're a celebrity. Right. Like yeah. influencers when they're at a resort putting up photos, they don't do it in real time. Generally because not, then yeah. people would go to that resort to trying try to, to find yes. the influencers. Yeah, so rather yeah. than do that, they wait a week or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, by the way, just because you brought it up. Uh, Liam Payne yeah. was his name. Mm -hmm. So his autopsy report came out like an hour ago, mm -hmm. and they found uh, m many drugs in his system, one of which was called pink cocaine. Okay. And I was like, I've never even heard of this. Yeah, like, yeah. That's a new one for me. And it, it kind of reminded me of the whole of situation in Gotham with Bliss. With Bliss. Yeah. That they, but pink cocaine, is like, it's like a mix of several drugs. It's like MDMA and like wow. some other hallucinogenic substance. and like some. Anyway, so he was on... Jeez, some some yeah. shit. Okay. It was also like crack and opioids in his system. And point being, he was on a lot of drugs. Yeah. But uh, yeah, to bring it yeah. back to so, Gotham, you didn't uh, like the TikTok. Yeah, the, this there. again, it, this was just another thing that the, overall, this is definitely, this falls more into like the nitpick category for me uh, for this episode. But it, it, there, there were, it, all, all that to say, there were things pretty quickly, pretty, very fast in this episode that I was bumping on, which I think contributed to my overall. Uh, disappointment with with the episode but we'll get into some of the broader strokes okay, here in okay. a minute so taj maroney is this kid's name and they go and kidnap him while he's getting a tattoo they murder a lot of people here okay so that was another thing i immediately flagged i was like damn did he just off like six innocent people yeah, in the tattoo parlor yeah, my wife did, yeah. was of the opinion that that was probably taj's crew that like he doesn't go get tatted up at a place by himself. So I also tried to make the same rationalization in my head. I was like, man, this is probably like a tattoo parlor that's strictly for like gangbangers and guys criminals. Only. Bad guys only. Yeah, this is only baddies in here. Yeah. But like the dude, like the tattoo artist, it stands up and then gets popped. And his blood and like his sprays blood on spray. Taj's like, face. Like this is this is. 
this is a mass murder. Yeah. This is this is bad stuff. Here. Well, if even at this point in the episode you're still trying to uh, rationalize your rooting for the penguin, um, it it gets harder. It gets harder in a few minutes yeah, here. So yeah, yeah. yeah they uh, they kidnap that kid. Then Oz visits the prison where uh, you know mm-hmm. the head Maroni is locked up, and says basically, "I want my drugs back in exchange for your son, Salvatore." That's the that's the head Maroney. That's it. Yeah, yeah Salvatore. Yeah. I thought you were gonna <laughs> go off there. Um, so on his way out of the prison, trying to button it up, trying to keep it tight. It's a long episode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he pays off. <laughs> we got to get through it. He pays off one of the guards. We just see him like there's like an exchange yeah, he of says cash. Something. He's like he's like red shirt at red jacket at your eleven, which I don't know what that meant. It had to have been like code for kill the guy I was just sitting with, right? Okay, so, yeah, like, we yeah. find, obviously, this yeah. is him paying for a, an yes. attempted assassination, which we find out later. Um, he also sees Oz does on the prison TV screen on his way out the news that, like, all of the Falcons are mm-hmm. dead. Uh, over at the Falcone mansion, the Gotham chief of police, Mackenzie Bach, who's played by Con O'Neill of... Uh, yeah, who is this guy? Our Flag Means Death fame. Okay, all right. Yeah, he... Uh, He's... A- what happened to all the people in the house? Dude, he's got a very, very <laughs> unique voice. <laughs> very unique way of speaking. All of these accents on the show are going to uh, make me lose my voice. Yeah. Is what's going to happen here. So he's really recognizable because he's in The Batman. He, he, okay, I, that's, he's I, in multiple I, scenes yes. in The Batman. I knew so this have, dude. I was like, this is some something connected here. Because right. I recognize... That's kind of what I figured is that we'd seen him in the Batman. And clearly what they're trying to do, and they haven't had a ton of success because they had to recast um, the role of uh, yeah, Carmine. Carmine Falcone. They're trying to include as many characters from the movie as they can to keep it all linear for you know the right, Batman right, too. Right, right. So this guy they did get, Con O'Neill, uh, as Mackenzie Bach, and he questions Sophia basically about what happened here. Like, all these people are fucking dead. Um, and I kind of just... Not established in my mind. One of the things we learn about the chief of police in Gotham in the Batman is that he also is crooked. So during this conversation, I was like with him and Sophia. I'm like, well, he has to know that like she did this. Like her literal nickname is the Hangman. It's well documented in the press that she is a psychopath who mm-hmm. has cu- killed a lot of people, regardless of the fact that that was all those were all false accusations, right? right? right. Um, surely he suspects her. Was my point. But, uh, and she's, like, playing it very aloof, you know, like, almost overacting that she's, like, in mourning. Like, she's not afraid to let this guy know, like, yeah, maybe I did do it. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, what are you going to do about it? And then it kind of comes into frame when she mentions how the GCPD will be missing all of those kickbacks from the Falcone family. She's basically like, you are crooked as shit. What are you going to do? Yeah. Like, I know way more than you can possibly do anything about. Um... The little girl that Sophia saved, one mm. of these, I can't remember who, which Falcone family's kid it was, but... Yeah, it was the daughter of that one girl, that one that one lady who, like, comes up to Sophia yeah. at, the, at the one thing earlier. Yeah. And then she, like, threatens her all of a sudden. One of her family members. Yeah, it's a family member. Yeah. And, yeah. uh... They, anyway, the, the little girl she saved is being taken into, like, child protective custody. I thought Sophia was going to, like, adopt this girl or something, which feels like that would have been tough to work into the story. Probably, yeah. S- sort of made more sense, but also sort of a sad ending for her. Like, yeah, yeah, her family's dead. Because she tells her, like, I'm going to save you from the monsters. Mm-hmm. I'm not, you're, you're not going to have to worry about the things I worried about. But then she immediately gets put into the system where notoriously yeah. there are monstrous things yeah, that yes, occur. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so Sophia has Johnny VD locked up in the family crypt. If you were like, where the fuck is this? It's the it's where all the Falcones get laid to rest mm-hmm. down in the old crypt. Like, do what? Where I don't. Why does my family not have a crypt? It's a thing in Game of Thrones. Yeah, it's a not, thing in Gotham. Not rich enough. Oh, we, yeah, we just yeah. didn't. Yeah, we just get buried with the poor. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, bummer. You don't have like a forty-acre, a st- hundred-acre estate, uh, you know, to, in which to have a crypt. Yeah, that's your problem. Yeah. That's 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 very true. <laughs> that's very true. I want the Logan Roy crypt when I die. Yeah, just FYI, yeah. if, what is what is that? What I don't. You know when that. they go to they go to Logan Roy. Oh yeah, the fu- resting yeah, yeah, yeah. place, yes, and it's right, like that's a full-on right. fucking mausoleum yes, with yes, like yes, eight yes. different tombs in there, and he's got spots for all of his kids and ex-wives picked out and shit. Yep. 
that's anyway, right. that's where Johnny Vitti's locked up down in the family crypt. He's freezing his ass off. Sophia wants Vitti to tell her where her dad's uh, stash of untraceable, untraceable cash mm-hmm. is is located. Mm-hmm. Now, I get it. Sort. Of. Why does it need to be untraceable? What is it? What she was worried about the the cash being traced. I just thought that was an interesting detail that they provided. It's like, what's the difference between traceable cash and cash and untraceable cash? But there was a, uh, you know, they kind of harped on it. So I was like, okay, why does it? She just ends up dumping it out and giving it to all these guys. So I don't know why she cared so much about I it being untraceable. I, I didn't. I, I didn't hold on too tightly to the untraceable piece of it. She just needs the money. She just needs where the. She just needs the cash stash. I think what she's saying is that she basically she's not going to go to the bank and pull out a hundred grand. Right. Right. Like she need. Where's the cash at right now? Where's the big bags of it that are you know have already been laundered and and are ready you to, to to you know? It's clean money. It's clean money. It's not attached yeah. to some bank robbery that if any of these guys spend it, it's immediately going to get traced back right, to them or right, whatever. Right. Um. So she wants that cash, and Vidi's like, "What do you think? I'm an idiot. You're just going to kill me immediately after I give you what you want." Which she obviously argues against, but does end up doing <laughs> later <laughs> in the episode. She tells him it gets cold down there, dumps water on him, and leaves him for a while. You know, she comes back later, rips a heater, uh, just hanging out, uh-huh. watching him suffer. Yeah, and he's like, he's not. It's not just like he's got like his hands cuffed to some pole. There's like a bit in his mouth, a whole head harness situation. He's got, yeah, I, the, I I think the kind of like subtle nod here was that she u- probably used his own like BDSM stuff on him, on him. Yeah, for to tie him, tie his ass up because this was like some ball gag and shit definite like, right? BDSM vibes to this. Yeah, this was she, not strictly like. <laughs> Kidnapping, kidnapping equipment, equipment. No, right, right, right. Yeah. And she, you know, she's in the bedroom with him. Like, I think she, this is kind of like rubbing it in his face a little bit. Okay, about yeah. What a sick perf he is. You yeah. know, having sex with the boss's wife, that type of thing. Real, I don't know. Real kinky guy, that Johnny yeah. Vitti. Yeah. So eventually, Johnny Vitti goes from telling Sophia to just kill him already. No kink shaming, though. By the way, no, no, no. That's no, not of what course, I'm doing. Of course I'm just, not. You know, just pointing it out. Just analyzing. Yeah. Uh, he starts begging her to let him help her. Right. Uh, sharing that he tried to help her mother. Isabella Gigante Falcone, who was his cousin that he loved dearly. And uh, he tried to help her escape the family and her husband, Carmine Falcone. He says he helped Isabella plan her escape. He himself was in a car a few blocks away, which seems a little far, uh, down the road waiting to help her make her getaway the night that she actually died, which he still seems to think was a murder. I th- Just by his phrasing, I thought I caught on to that. Like, he's not admitting that... I'm sorry... He still think, seems to think it's a suicide. Oh no, I think he he's he he's was acknowledging, acknowledging it? that it, that she was murdered by okay. Carmine. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Because yeah. the, the one of the very next lines, Sophia is like, "You still worked for him after all." Like after. Okay, that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, like you, yeah. Uh, he says that uh, her mother had intended on leaving before, but she never could because of the kids, because of Sophia and Alberto, which I think they're trying to like make into a reason that Johnny Vitti has always sort of resented Sophia, mm-hmm. because in his head, like. This cousin that he clearly had a very close relationship with with would still be alive if not for her, mm. uh, which is pretty twisted logic. But he saw her as the reason, and uh, at least in at least that's what he's trying to explain to her right. in this sob story in an effort to like keep himself alive. Yeah. Anyway, Johnny argues he can serve Sophia, and she needs him and the respect that he carries in order to be able to take over the family successfully. So for the time being, she obliges and lets him live. Uh, he says, I couldn't help your mother. Let me help you. Oz visits his pseudo girlfriend, Eve, who is super pissed that the hangman knows like her identity, her and all of her girls, all the cam girls, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. all their names, the only fans models. And Oz tells her, uh, tells his crew in the living room. Cause they're all just there yeah. hanging out. Yeah. Also Taj, the TikTok influencer <laughs> is there. <laughs> Uh, he tells them, like, uh, the way he sees it, Sophia did them a favor, one family down, one to go. He's always trying to, like, you know, shift the narrative to his best interest, Oz. Course, and he's very good at yeah. it, frankly. He he's always a real, sees he's the, a real schemer. He's sees a real the silver schemer. lining, right? So Oz goes and attempts to make the trade off with Nadia Maroney, Mama Maroney, uh, her son, in exchange for the drugs that the Maronis took from him, right? It does not go well. A shootout ensues with Uzis. They've, everybody's got Uzis in there. Just spraying Uzis around mm-hmm, a room. Mm-hmm. And then Oz ends up uh, burning Nadia and Taj uh, alive. Yeah, Taj is 
covered in gasoline, as and, it turns out. And then there's a, a line of it. Yeah, because you know? she walks over to, to Nadia. Uh, uh-huh. um, if you were wondering where the, where the hell did he do that. That's why his mouth is shut, and that's why he doesn't untape his mouth, so he can't Scream, say that. I'm covered in gasoline. I'm covered in gasoline, like this is a trap. Yeah. 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 And then Oz uh, lights them on fire and watches them burn alive, um, Daenerys style. And seems to like it a kind little of, too much. Yeah, fascinated by it, likes it. Definitely got a little got a little grin on that face yeah. of his. And th- this is where I start to have like the broader strokes issues with the episode. Is because we're gonna get to more of the the, the Sophia stuff here, uh-huh. but. This is 55 minutes of the show needing to push plot forward, and it, it, I could feel them. I, I, I right now is when I can feel that this season has to take place in a limited amount of time and do enough plot movement to set up for a movie. Okay, because th- this is, this is such a major turning point for Oz and for how we see Oz. This dude lights two people on fire and watches them burn alive. Yeah, while like, they like hug each other and scream. Th- this is like I, a like, mother and son. A mother and son. I don't really like. It doesn't really matter like how how big a baddies the Maronis were. Like this is a ser- seriously sinister act that yeah. he that he pulls off. Yeah. After murdering an entire tattoo parlor's worth of people. Yeah. Basically, and like that. Th- this is this is so climactic, right? This is so. This, you know, we, I just invoked the Daenerys, but this is her, you know, this is her burning um, the, the 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 Tullys or whoever, or who who was that? The she burned a lot of people. You know, the dad and 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 Dickon, Dickon, she, she did Dickon, Dickon something, Dickon, Rickon. She Dick, did genocide though. Yeah, but this, like, this is this is a moment that felt like it all, it like kind of should have been the the very end of the episode or something like that. Like sure. this is this needed more time. This needed more thought. And then it happens, what, like 30 minutes into the episode? Yeah, it's kind of in the middle. It's just in the middle. It's just something that happens. And then we're boom, right onto like the mushrooms and the more and more of what Sophia happens and the mom and the thing. And then like, and like, so like, it's really hard to like get like, it's difficult to reconcile another Oz moment where we're kind of a little bit back on his side with the, with the, the mom and talking about his brothers and how they were taken from him by the city, just like Vic's family. And then, oh, here's this kind of like resurrection Phoenix moment where we find the underground. We, obviously, we, we'll, we'll get to that plot wise. But like all that happening in the same episode where he burns a mom and son alive with gasoline and watches their bodies crumble to the ground in flames. Yeah. Like they, they, we're just jamming this in because we only have three episodes left and we have to get to the point where all this makes sense for Batman. Too. Oh, I didn't take it that way at all, though. I, t- I, I get I hear you, but I took it as like uh, one of several huge moments in one episode that made the episode on the whole very explosive yeah i just yeah i i guess I, you you I, and you might be right I see you how, may I, end up feeling no, and that I, way. no i mean i can see how how you look at it that way but and it's just again it's like it's it's hard to not be conscious of the fact of what we're doing here with this series and like again if it's just just to you know I know this is a drum I keep beating, but like if this wasn't associated with the Batman universe, if this was just an HBO Sunday night crime drama, right? I just think it would be way more interesting to 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 linger on some of these things because for me, the best moments in this show so far have been the episodes that do the character work and the development with Sophia in episode four and Vic in episode three. And and, and I don't disagree with that. And yeah. so it, so so for for it to just kind of like churn through plot. And maybe not spend enough time on what should be like a very, very, very serious moment for our the titular character just felt a little hasty. Yeah, and I mean, my counterpoint would be, okay, for 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 one, the moment is pretty complicated because Oz is not the one who has set a trap here. Oz has a counter trap. They shut the fucking door so that he's stuck in there instead of being allowed to drive away. Then he puts his counter trap in place and sets these people on fire. I- Right. So I, what I, I'm what, saying is no, he, because I think he, I think he's gonna I think his plan A is to kill them because he's already set up Maroney in the prison. Like his plan is to wipe this family out here and now. Maybe I'm just saying they give you this like moral complication by allowing you to see like well now he's shut in. It's like he didn't have a choice, right? So there's still there's still something there that yeah. you could argue he wasn't gonna burn those two people alive. I mean, what the hell are they gonna do without Carmine or uh, without the uh, with Salva, Salvatore? I mean, she's kind of running the show. Yeah, but Salvatore's the, it, in prison. 
But that's that's the the other read about the Maroney family that I'm getting is like these people don't have a ton of power. Like the Falcons were running shit. The Maroneys were very much right, had right. been like pushed to the bottom of the pile because their boss is locked up. Yep. And I also I, I one of the other reasons I liked the scene is that normally a show would do what you're talking about. This would be a final moment of the episode. This would be like a penultimate mm-hmm. episode type of explosive scene and moment. But they didn't holster it. They just give it to you out of fucking nowhere. It's right. dealt with very quickly. And the entire thing, like everything is just put into motion as a result. Um, it gives me the impression that in Gotham, crazy shit is happening pretty constantly. You know what I mean? Like right, this, this right. place is so screwed up that there's not like, a, that's just another day in Gotham. Yeah. Like a, the, a, a head of a crime family's mother or a wife and son were burned alive and it's just it's episode five i think i think this episode gave me the vibes you know what i you know what it felt like it felt like i was playing grand theft auto this episode yeah, yeah a little bit yeah with like the way that it, like you're doing missions and you're moving around and you're and just dude, like blasting dude, you're just you just and that's I what gotham blasting. is supposed to feel like right I think. right you know um, i don't it, think anybody's it, ever really captured that outside of the matt reeves version of it yeah uh and and, and but it, it felt like that instead of watching like a a kind of like a you know, gritty crime gritty, thriller, y- y- prestige television show, right? But the, I so mean, the, that, that's I do enjoy that element though, because yeah. in the in the Dark Knight trilogy, like you you see Bruce Wayne out on the town going to swanky hotels mm-hmm. and and fucking posh events. You don't spend a ton of time with like the the actual you know vibes of Gotham, the seedy underbelly, the seedy underbelly <laughs> of Gotham, which is like the it's most of Gotham, right? It seems. Right. I like that this show is like staying there, yeah. and it's just all this horrible shit happening all of the time. So I, I hear your argument for sure, and yeah. this was it was definitely like raised my eyebrows to get this in the middle of the episode. Like, oh wow, okay, well there go the Maronis, I guess. <laughs> but of course, the other yeah. one survives, which is a huge loophole, um, and we see that kind of cut into this this whole. Mm-hmm. It's it's happening like at the same time we watch. The guard inside Blackgate, who Oz paid off, shank Salvatore Moroni. But the way they cut away from it, immediately I was like, oh, he's absolutely <laughs> going to murder that guard. Now, at no point did yeah, I, I, imagine, I was I was like, man, they got him. They got his at, ass. At, at no point was I like, and he's going to escape. But we'll get to that in yeah. a moment. Um, you ever get home from work and wish you could just plop on the couch and enjoy your favorite TV show or movie without having to worry too much about what's for dinner? Of course you do. We all do. Today's episode is brought to you by Factor, and they can help with that. Sweater weather pairs perfectly with savory fall foods, but with your busy schedule, sometimes it's hard to eat the way you'd like to. That's where Factor comes in. Their chefs do the shopping and the chopping to bring you fresh, never-frozen, fully-cooked meals right to your doorstep. All you have to do is heat and eat. All of their meals are dietitian approved, so you know you're getting the nutrition you need along with the fall flavors you crave. Whether you're managing calories, maximizing your protein intake, or simply trying to eat more balanced, Factor has dietitian approved meals that will help you meet your wellness goals. Choose from six meal preferences, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie. And round out your order with nutrition, uh, nutrient-rich smoothies, snacks, and energy shots to keep you satisfied all day long. Dinner time at my house, uh, personally. It can be extremely chaotic, so it's nice that on some nights when my wife and I don't feel like cooking, we can turn to Factor to make sure our family is still eating well. And I've probably had like all 35 different meal options at this point. Everything Factor delivers is phenomenal. Factor is, without a doubt, by far the best meal delivery service I've ever tried, and I've tried a lot of them, Clam Fam. Head to factormeals.com slash OCC50 and use code OCC50 to get 50% off your first box and 20% off your next month. That's code OCC50 at factormeals.com slash OCC50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. And you can find the link and the details for that deal in the description of this episode. So after taking out Mama Maroney and her son, Oz, and uh, I guess he rolled in with two henchmen. One of them gets got, so it's just him and one other guy that gets out alive. But all the shrooms, aside from two buckets, are completely ruined. And my read was that when the fire extinguisher situation happened, that 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 killed these mushrooms, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Salvatore Moroni has busted out of Blackgate with the help. They gassed them. They gassed the shrooms. They gassed the shrooms. (laughs) 
<laughs> with the help of the failed assassination attempt, which he explains, like, because he calls Oz. Yeah. Oz realizes the shrooms are fucked, then his phone rings, it's Salvatore, yeah. and Salvatore is like, gotcha, you stupid fuck. Thanks for the keys to escape. To, yeah, and I yeah. was like, Okay, this Same, was this yeah. was the only moment in the episode that I was like, "That's fucking this idiotic." Is a, yeah, this so you tell me, a guard came into his cell, <laughs> stabbed him brutally in like the lung area. Yeah, 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 right in the gut. Salvatore fought him to the death, killed him, took the keys off of his belt, unlocked his cell, and walked casually out, escapes. then unlocked the next. You know, yeah, if, if for Gotham because typically, just and this out. is just my you know amateur understanding of it, but the way they design these prisons is so that you can't just escape from one door. You have to go through several layers of security right, to right. get to the outside world, including typically a long walk from like a gate that leads you to the outdoors to like a fenced off thing with like guards and fucking heavy artillery. Point being, I do not understand how this yeah, man escaped. Yeah. I don't appreciate them giving us no we, further detail. We yada 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 the prison escape. Yeah, 100%. which is like, what yeah. the fuck? Uh, okay, so he's out, and he's obviously very, uh, very upset with uh, Penguin, who doesn't make it better by telling him like, "Oh yeah, I'm so stupid, huh? I'm trying to call your <laughs> wife." <laughs> like, oh, dude, Jesus Christ. Yeah, because you know he set her on fire. Um, so yeah, that guy's out, and uh, Oz is like, "Oh shit, my mom. She's that's the first thing I'm worried about." So he call he tells Vic, "You got to go get my mom. You got to take her somewhere safe." And Vic is like, "Where?" And he's like, "I don't have the slightest fucking clue." <laughs> Which I actually thought was like a nice realistic uh, yeah, twist yeah. in here. It's like he didn't even have a safe house. He's just like, "I don't know, dude. We need to figure something out." Vic wisely takes her to Crown Point. His old neighborhood, which actually yeah. turns out to also be her old neighborhood. Vic, who has been on mom duty, by the way, uh, you know, ju- juicing the story, telling her that it w- that Oz lay waste to the Falcone family and um, having that to, he's doing it, having to clean up the whole kitchen because there's some uh, there's some dementia cooking going on there. A lot, yeah. She's got like sticky notes all over her door, which I was yeah. hoping they were going to give us like a, mm. some insight into what's written on those because I think it's her trying to remember like who she is and what day it is and stuff like that. Right, right. But yeah, when he goes in, there's just like a pot boiling on the stove. Yeah. The refrigerator door is wide open. Like, she was like seconds from a house fire here. <laughs> Thank yeah. God for Vic, though. Yeah. She also mistakes Vic for, like, one of her other sons, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. which is just interesting because, you know, he's not white. <laughs> right? She's just yeah, really yeah, losing yeah, it. She's really, like, yeah. look, I got your baseball glove. He's like, yeah. Jesus, <laughs> this is a bad situation <laughs> with this lady. But, yeah, he takes her to Crown Point. That's his old neighborhood. He doesn't want to go back. It brings up bad memories for him. Turns out she's in the same boat. She has some memories still, it turns out. Yeah. And his, she, his memories are right there on the street corner, Ross. That's... That's Squid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that guy's out there. He's doing crime he now, too. He sees him. He sees Vic going into the apartment. You, you can't think that's, that's going to... That's, that can't be good. That's going to be a song. thing. Squ- not Squid. <laughs> Squid's ripping a heater. He's on the street. He's got a gang now. Yeah, yeah. It's just lawlessness everywhere he's down just, there, he's man. He's running Crown Point, man. Yeah, the cops don't go to Crown Point, Barrett. Um, Sophia Falcone meets with all the surviving members of the Falcone family, which are just like hencho, uh, henchmen and, and yeah, ca- capos yeah. and shit like that, right? Plus Johnny Vitti. She announces the Falcone family is no more, and she's pretty, you know, straightforward about it. She's like, I, I did it. I killed them all. And, uh, and she explains why. She's like, they did this to my mother. Right. <clears throat> uh, they were terrible people. They had me locked up in, in Arkham Asylum, yada, yada. And uh, she says they're rebranding. To the Giganta, Gigant, yeah, gi- Gigante all, family, the Gigante. Gigante crime family, in honor of her late mother, because that was her late mother's maiden name. Now, apparently, there is some sort of storyline like this in the comic books. Yeah, she apparently is Sophia Falcone Gigante, Gigante in the comic books. But as I learned in the inside of the episode, this is due to her marrying into a Gigante family. So this is a twist for the show that that Lauren LaFranc and and crew added it as where that's like her mother's maiden name and she kind of like takes it with more agency and it kind of adds to her her kind of power and her lore a little bit more yeah a move that i think is 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 really solid for the sophia character that they're creating here um the, the, this this was a spot where i had kind of mixed feelings not the not this exact scene that you're talking about but right before it julian rush her uh her psychiatrist, her psychiatrist her therapist? slash therapist shows up and it's like 
I know you did it. I can see what it's done for you. It's given you sweet, sweet release, and I want to release all over you. <laughs> um, <laughs> or, 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 oh, sorry, no, that's not what he said. Or yeah. inside you. Right, right, yes. Yeah. Either, either or. No, he wants the same release that, that he sees Sophia uh, has been given due to uh, mass murder, and he, he's there. He just wants to be a, along for the ride. Put me in coach. Uh, <laughs> yeah. do, do what you will with me, mommy. He's very um, aroused. Yeah. So, all right. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Sophia's like laying out the the Isabella Gigante fur coat. She about to put that shit on. It's got a know? name tag in it. It's got. Right. Yeah, yeah. So it's custom. This felt uh, again like this. This was a moment where I felt the comic books and the and the movies coming into play. Not not in a bad way, just more than I more than I would personally like because I'm enjoying the side of the show that is kind of exists outside of the whole Batman thing. Okay, without having a goal to accomplish? Right, yeah. because this dude comes in and you're like, all right, well, he's going to be somebody. Like, this is somebody. This is a character that that comic book fans probably know that's already, we already kind of like were tipped off to this. This dude has to be somebody. Uh, right. He's getting too much screen time. He seems too important. He seems too, you know, just... He stands out. Yeah, he, he just stands characters out. characters seem yes. like they were investing in him for something. Meanwhile, she puts on the fur coat and then bust through the doors with the cool music playing, and she's got her hair is like the new hairdo, but now she's got like even cooler makeup on. Yeah, and like she is now achieving, you know, the the she she's she is uh, evolving into full. What's it go? You go from Charmander to Charizard. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, yeah. she's she's evolving into her full fledged uh, Pokemon version of herself. Sure. And I like I liked it. It was like a cool vibe. I just like it's very it's very much like. A villain is born moment. Definitely. That felt comic, you know, and I, I'm okay with that part. It's just something that like really like registered for me. Yeah. Uh, and that I could feel the show was kind of like needing to do in a way. This also is a moment that makes me, I, I'm, I think I'm, I do think she can be in the, in the Batman two now. I think we're getting both. You think she can survive this season? I think she's going to survive this season. There, there's too many, they're putting too many irons in the fire like that seem like too big of a deal. See, I, I think for whatever reason, this episode got your brain too much focused back on like the fact that there's going to be a movie. Yeah, I think she's yeah. f- toast, bro. I don't. Yeah. There's okay. There's three more of these, man. There's three hours. Every episode has been like over an hour. There's at least three hours left <laughs> of this shenanigans in this war that's about to unfold. Yeah. Yeah. I think it still ends with you. See, okay. You the see. penguin eliminates all these other families. He is the crime boss in Gotham. Okay. In right. Batman Two. Okay. Um, okay. I can, yeah, I can but, still see that too. They're just doing a lot of like, really like like it like seem, seeming like like big time work on her. Yeah, I'm with you. They're investing so much in the the Sofia Gigante yeah. character now, and I'm also with you on the Julian Rush scene. It was like when I saw him walk into the room, I was like, this fucking guy, <laughs> because this is an area where I'm like, if if maybe if they had ten episodes, they would have invested some more time into like, because. It's not that we didn't get the vibes right, that right. he was no, going to be. Vibes. We yeah, definitely yeah, picked yeah. up on the vibes, but he goes from being like, you should go to Italy, mm-hmm. start anew, you deserve a fresh start, you just got out of the psych ward three weeks ago, right. to being like, I saw you killed your whole family, <laughs> I pledge my undying loyalty to you, please let me date you, Yeah, yeah. I'll do anything. And then going and standing in the room and being a witness to the next murder she commits, yeah. where he's just standing there like approvingly, like mm. yes, yeah. Now on that front, you know, uh, the, the, uh, you want more opportunities to 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 root for Sophia. At least I do, and so that always becomes tougher when she just just like you know killing people point blank. But this was the right move. People um, killing people. People killing people. Yeah, she 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 played this perfectly. Let this guy give you the sob story. Think he has a chance because you're buying it. Get the untraceable cash. Get the untraceable cash. And then the moment this dude shows any resistance to your new seat of power, you got to end him. Yeah. 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 So, setting the tone and the example I, for everybody else. Yeah. 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 This was a very, like, because sometimes shows, I feel like they'll, you know, they let this drag on for too long. And you know when it's it just, happening yeah, eventually. It, and it just doesn't make any sense. You can't trust this dude as far as you can throw him Absolutely anymore. Absolutely not. He's going to take, right. he's going to try to take your ass out the moment he has a chance. No, so I'm, you, I'm with you. I yeah. thought, I thought this was well written um, and well executed, no pun intended. But like, he even says to her, Vidi, he's like, you're not just going to be able to waltz in and take over. You're going to need me. 
because I have the respect. And why does he have the respect? Probably from doing murder, right? <laughs> like that's how gangsters get respect yep. by, you know, working their way up the ladder and taking people out, painting houses, and so she and painting houses. So she, you know, paints his house in front of everybody. Yeah, and uh, just like that. If you're in that room and you've just watched her give that speech and you think she's the hangman who yeah, murdered yeah, seven yeah. women and spent time in the psych ward and just killed the entire Falcone family, if you're in that room, yeah. are you going to stand up and right. be like, I don't think so, lady. No, but nah. I would, when I reach for my cash, I'd be like, give me some of that on top. I don't want the one with the blood on it. Thank you. Yeah, I was a little concerned about that. There was a lot, a <laughs> lot of the blood. A lot of blood on she that She dumped cash. that money right the yeah, fuck right on in the, t- right in the blood. Come on, Jesus. You can't take that to the store yeah, and no, pay what with you, it. What, what do you got? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand somebody at Nordstrom a blood-covered $100 bill? I Murder do dollars? <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Uh, but yeah, so she's doing the rebrand. Johnny Vitti protests and does it in a way that, frankly... Part of the message here is like he never would have talked to no, of a, a not. male boss yeah, the right. way he talks to her in front of all these people. So she just fucking blows his head off. Yeah, which was very cool. Although sad to see his character go because he was quite uh, quite good. What's it, Michael Kelly? Michael Kelly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love him. He was great in the inside the episode thing, which I did watch yeah. this week. Okay, okay. Um, Look at you. Yeah, well, my wife you're figured. Un- out, you're just unpredictable. We, man. we 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 you helped her figure out that these exist. Okay, and so now now we're on to. But <laughs> honestly. I know I'm a broken record here, and I know I flip flop a lot, and I don't know what the right answer is. But I love these. It's so fun to get the insights from the people who are there, and like you can always tell when they, like you've said repeatedly this season, these people are super invested in creating a really good story that could exist on its own without the Batman movie franchise. Well, one of my favorite things that they're doing in these, I, the, and and this is not like you don't really have to worry about these Game of Thrones, like Game of Thrones style, because there's not that like. They they are not. There's not really much to project forward here in in the same way. Um, and it. The, but anyway, no, oh, it's not uh, that deep. It's eight episodes, exa- and that might exactly. be it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I like how much they're getting into like the filmmaking aspect. So yeah, they spend the these. first like ten minutes kind of recapping the episode. Yeah, like giving you a little further, deeper writer and showrunner explanation for the events you've just seen unfold. And then they sort of go to the like cinematography and yeah. stylistic elements to the way they cool. build shit, which yeah. is very nice. Because yeah. that, that's not something you get a lot. And like I love this like this this I, I should I should have her name in front of me. The female director that's 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 directed these last few episodes is talking about how like they you know for for the sophia episodes they're using dollies and and um and and tracks and and things like that so that the camera's super steady because they're like that that's it's it's stability it's power She's stable now yeah. um and then they versus go to the, the handheld they camera. go to the eyes and it's all handheld and so it's that visceral like instability like movement action like nothing nothing's right nothing you know everything's kind of like shaky and is it helen shaver the name i think that's right for? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So that, that that that's super cool. Yeah, love the inside the episode uh, for this week, and and you know, maybe I'll maybe I'll watch next <laughs> week. Who knows? Who can say? Um, so yeah, it's Helen Shaver, yeah. she dumps all the untraceable cash that VD helped her find on the table for any man who will remain loyal to her. Basically, like if you're gonna stick around, this is for you. And she, look, the speech she gives is moving. She's like, these fuckers, they took all your money. Johnny VD being one of those fuckers, by the way. She's like, you guys were the ones putting in the work. You were on the street doing the dirty work, making the money, and they kept it all for themselves. I am giving it back to you. Yep. And the way I will run this new family is by making sure you are paid. And it's interesting because it mirrors what Oz says to his crew at the beginning of the episode. He's like, haven't I always made sure that when I eat, you eat? Yep. You know what yep. I mean? Yep. So like, it's, it's the, you got to bring, if you want to be a good gangster in uh-huh. 2024 in Gotham City, you better have some socialist ideals. Correct. Correct. Because if you're coming with the old school <laughs> Shit that shit the Tony Soprano shit runs downhill uh-huh, and that's the way uh-huh. it works. Eventually somebody's yeah. gonna take you out. That's right. Um so yeah, uh also Julian Rush is there and and he wants to be a part of whatever happens next, which is just more murder. I don't know why he's not seeing that. Julian Horry Michael. Yeah. Next, Sophia shoots her way into a sit down with Salvatore Moroni, who is at his, he's like he's on the lamb out in the mm-hmm. woods or some mm-hmm. shit. Um she tells him they have a common enemy in the penguin. Since, you know, he killed Maroney's wife and son and also her brother. And that they have to unite. I'm just giving you the... I'm paraphrasing. Mm-hmm. They have to work together to take out the Penguin. And, yeah. then, and then they can take over the city together. And this is where I get to the point where I'm like, I, I'm, I can't buy in with you that she's going to make it to the Batman okay. too. Okay, okay. Because this is ma- almost making it like too convenient 
it's or two. It, it's it's setting up it, kind of Oz being able to wipe out wipe the board. It's clearly. Oz versus everyone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. the everyone else team, which is the Maronis and the and Gigantes. That, yeah, yeah. They actually fucking hate each other. So right, like, right. Sophia is selling him on this idea of a short term partnership, mm-hmm. but with us all also knowing that there's a huge Probably potential for betrayal either way. Right. Between the two of them, Maroni and, and Gigante. So. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Okay. Okay. I, yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Again, again, I, I don't, I don't understand how Maroni plans on operating now. Cause like he can't just go back to Gotham. Right. Cause like, you know, he just broke out of prison, which would you would assume is like going to be on the news and stuff. See, yeah, and maybe Gotham's just so fucking. Out I think of it's just right, right. If right. you make it out, they, they you're don't, good. Good, yes, yes. Because again, all you have to do is make it out of your cell, and they're like, "Oh my god, he did it!" Okay, let him out. Open the <laughs> open the other gates. Open the seven that, other gates. That's kind of where I am. I yeah. think he just he's out there, and they, he got out, and they're like, "Oh shucks!" And he's on he's on the lam because Penguin just killed these two members of his family, and he's got to regroup yeah, and yeah. get his shit together. Yeah. <clears throat> um, anyway, so Sophia and Salvatore Moroni have teamed up here. They're going to go up against Oz, and uh, Oz gets to Crown Point where Vic and his mom are posted up, cuddles with mommy for a little bit, and Big, he's big spoon. she goes from being very stoked when Vic is like, Oz is doing it. He's making moves. He, She's like, did he kill all those Falcons? Which he did not, obviously. Sophia did. Vic lies to her uh-huh. and says, yes, he did, Just to, and she loves that. She's like, oh, my God, we're doing it. We're yeah. doing it. He's going to need my help. <laughs> He's going to need my help. We're finally doing it. Like, does a little jump kick. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, she's bummed, though, when she gets out to Crown Point. This she's place, like, doesn't, it doesn't even have electricity. Like, Fuck, I'm Ross, back where I started. You know? Yeah, this is, this is no good. No Worst good. neighborhood in the city, all this flood damage. Mama was promised a penthouse. Exactly. You know? And she got the complete and total opposite right. of that. So she's laying in bed. She's moping. And he comes in and and big spoon and and she she just gives him the only version of motivation she knows how to give, which is to make him feel fucking terrible about yeah. himself, uh, and and ask directly what kind of man can't even take care of his own mother, and uh, and yeah yeah it's oh also they repeatedly bring up how like this apartment that Vic has located, which is like somebody he knew that right. abandoned this area of the town. Uh, that it looks exactly like like Oz's childhood home. Mm-hmm. I, I just thought it was a little repetitive. Came up like three different times. So Oz is bummed that his mom is bummed, but his wheels are turning in his head because he's got to go do evil to make mommy happy. And he he's like rooting through a jar of old coins, and he finds one for the trolley service underneath the city that him and his brothers used to go down there and like you know dick around or whatever. Mm-hmm. So that sparks an idea. He takes Vic down to the un- underground abandoned tunnels for this trolley service that is no longer running because all the rich capitalist pigs in the Gotham government just started fucking, they got greedy, Barrett, and yeah. they started to steal all the money that was supposed to go to the trolleys. So one day they just, the trolleys just stopped working. Okay. Fucking nobody ever looked into that. Thank you for paraphrasing that for me because I did not know what he was saying there. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was the gist of it. I was like, yeah, yeah the trolleys, they stopped. Okay. Yeah, corruption. Yeah. Hashtag corruption. Um, so as they're walking down here, at first I was like, what the fuck are they doing? And then it dawned on me before he gets to the giant room, I was like, oh, because it reminded me of the Tim Burton version of Batman's Penguin, uh, where, he yes, where he has this underground, underground yes, layer. Same, same. And I was like, they're going to find Penguin's layer. This yes. is going to be Penguin's layer. Yep. And that's exactly what happens. Yes. Finds yep. a giant room. There's a generator that, for whatever fucking reason, still has gas in it. Cranks the generator. All the lights come on. It's this huge, dank, moist, disgusting, dark space yep. where, of course, mushrooms would grow perfectly. Right. And so Oz gets this big upswing in an episode of otherwise all downs, right? Like yeah, it's mostly yeah. a beating for him. Yeah. Um, and this the the trolleys um, uh, they tie to the <laughs> <laughs> entire city as well. By the way, giving so him is access be to like, distribute. Exact, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he even has a good line where he's like, "All oh, these fuckers, they're gonna be looking around. They're never gonna think to look down." I was like, <laughs> brilliant <laughs> logic. Not even when people start popping out of manhole covers with fucking <laughs> bags full of drugs. Because the cops in this city are just shit. They're so. not, they don't know what's going on. They don't know left from right. So, look, to, to, your, there, to your point, there was a lot that happened here. This a was ton, a, a hell of a lot of pl- pro- yes. plot progress in one episode to the point that clearly you felt like it was overwhelmed and not super well-timed. 
right? And and I'll hand it to you with a couple of those things, like the, the Julian Rush just walking in and being like, and now I'm your therapist slash lover, I hope, slash right-hand man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, seemed a little a little fast-paced for me, but all, all in all, I still really loved it, it and, and it did violently shoved us forward it, yeah, so that we can spend the last three episodes dealing with all of the right. the massive explosiveness that yeah. I assume is coming. And, and these shows are always a balancing act, right? Like the best prestige shows are character development and, and, and focusing on that, but they also need really good propulsive plots like that. There's it's, it's always a, a dance between those two things. And so this one just kind of like, I, I, it, it's not that it was bad. It's just that after, on the heels of episodes three and four, which do that really like 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 focus on on such character development, this one just I almost had like whiplash, mo- just yeah. eat, eating yeah. through this much <laughs> plot and going again through some moments where you really had to suspend disbelief. You just called out the the generator like somehow working and having gas after twenty five years of abandonment as well. Yeah, uh, and then just like stuff that probably would have been in a show not tied to the to the to the batman universe where they are will eventually have another movie like would have we would i think we just would have sat in those moments for a lot longer and and that that's really it um and you even even take the movies away from it if if this is a series where they know there is going to be a season two this is not happening as quickly as it right they would be saving some of this stuff or there would be you know Three of the moments in this episode would yep. have been the climax of three different episodes right, rather right. than one. Yep. Yep. So I do I I feel you on that part. Um but, but yeah, I was ho- dude, ho- and hopefully now, like you said, hopefully now with three more, we're set up in a we're in a place where we can like slow it down just a bit and 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 you know and, and try to and savor get, it and, and enjoy yeah, it a little yeah, more. Yeah, right, right. So that we get some of those really like good character moments and we feel like we have enough time with them yeah these were very cool moments like you know penguin burning mama maroney and and taj the uh tiktok influencer live was a cool crazy moment where you're just like jesus christ but it didn't have the payoff that it would have had there been more build-up right Right. so what we want to see in the final three episodes is a little more of that like high level genuine payoff instead of sort of the cheap thrills of what what happened here totally um so I'm, i'm with you i'm with you i think it is probably largely the result of the fact that they have an eight episode, maybe one season series here that they're dealing with to set up for another movie. So I, I hear you. I hear you for sure. But it, this one was like, it was so ridiculous that I think it was genuinely at the 30 minute mark. I was, I'm laying in bed watching this thing and I was like, man, this episode's been really good. It's probably only like five minutes yeah. left, right? <laughs> and I checked my phone because it shows you, you know, like the app at uh-huh. the top with the bar that like how far along you are on your iPhone. And there was like, 40 minutes left in the episode. I was like, Jesus, what the fuck? How many more people are going to die in this one? Um, that was, it was definitely fun. And I like, I, I still think they're maintaining the comic booky feel to it all. So it's like, it's not, you know, it's not taking itself too seriously, like too, too seriously, which allows for a little bit more of suspension of disbelief with right. me and yep, like the pacing totally. of things yep. to a certain extent. So um, all in all, I had fun again. And uh, really enjoyed it. Remember, Barrett and I will be back later this week on Patreon.com slash Oysters, Clams, Cockles to further digest and discuss this episode with the help of hotline calls from the members of the Mollusk Militia on Patreon.com slash Oysters, Clams, Cockles. So get in there on Patreon, subscribe to either the Clam Fam tier or the Mollusk Militia tier if you want to get access to the hotline number so you can call in and have the chance to actually be on the show and have Barrett and I respond to your question or theory or take about the penguin through episode five you can go on patreon.com slash oysters clams coggles now and enjoy a seven day free trial so you can see just how awesome these hotline call based episodes are there's four of them in the tank already for the first first four episodes of uh the penguin which you can go listen to while you enjoy that seven day free trial or watch if you get in the mollusk militia tier and want to watch the old youtube videos that are in there so do it join patreon.com slash oysters clams coggles today support our show and on that note, please support our sponsors all season long. Today we are uh, blessed with another Factor sponsorship. FactorMeals.com slash OCC50. Use code OCC50 to get 50% off your first box and 20% off your next month. Details in the description of this episode. If you're on YouTube, like, subscribe, 
Leave a comment as well. That helps us a lot. Thank you. Check out the Ross Bolin podcast for more from me. Also, Bolin Media provides you with the best American-made F1 content in the entire world in the form of Formula Bone. That's bone with a B. If you're a big F1 fan, go to youtube.com slash at Formula Bone and watch all of the episodes hosted by Jared J. Bone Borislow, where he's giving you a recap and a preview of every F1 race all season long. You can also listen on podcast platforms and follow at Formula Bone on social media. If you're a Houston sports fan, Check out Banging the Can, this week's episode I knocked out this morning, recapping and uh, yelling about the Texans' loss to the Green Bay Packers this weekend. Mr. Dudley, where can the people follow you on social media to keep up with your other content? Oh, I'm on Instagram and Twitter, at Barrett Dudley. At Barrett Dudley. And I'm at WR Bolin on Instagram and Twitter. Go to bolinmedia.com slash shop to grab yourself some merch. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. We look forward to hearing everyone's reactions on Patreon and reading them on social media. Until next time. Waddle, 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 waddle.